everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Groove Room. Today for The Groove Room, we got a very, very special one as we are reuniting two people from the real, the real world DC, Josh the Franchise Cologne and Mike Manning. Both of them are actors. Josh is, is a boxer. Mike is a is an actor, director, writer, and Josh is also involved with acting, di- directing, and writing, and he's the boxing champion as well. So it's going to be fun to have these these two go face to face for the first time since the real world. Uh, and it's up next. Okay, here we go. All right, um, everyone, welcome, welcome to Gru, and we got Josh and Mike from the real world dc right wasn't wasn't that the one yeah man it's it's been so long since somebody's introduced me that way it's like i'm just (laughs) it's like we stepped back 10 years this is insane right now yeah it's i i couldn't let the social experiment pass up itself considering he and i came from a social experiment and uh wow such a such a uh reminder of how far we've come and, and and where we've been and where we're going and it's beautiful yeah yeah it's great to see what you he said. really what he said. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like when did you both find out about the show and what made made you both want to do it okay uh you want me to go first sure yeah i was uh I had never watched the show before. I never watched Real World. I had no idea what it was, the premise or what it was about or anything. I was going to school for business, and um, my buddy, I I had done theater when I was when I was younger, and so he knew. And I had like done some short films and some acting gigs, but I was going to school for business. And my buddy John came up to me one day, and we're in like the library studying for a test, and he said, "Mike, there's an open casting call." And this is when I was in Colorado. There's an open casting call for Real World. I said, what's real world? He said, it's a show. I said, okay. And he said, will you go with me? You've auditioned before. Help go with me, help me get on the show and, uh, and be my, be my wingman. I said, okay, fine, man. Sure. (laughs) And, uh, and that's, that's how I was introduced to the whole, the casting people and, and got on the show. And I found out about the show when I was, I was working at Enterprise rent a car. And I got the phone call and I'll never forget, like I was like cleaning out a car and I got the phone call and I was an enterprise rent a car. And I remember putting my phone down and, and I was like, my life is about to change. This is awesome. So. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Josh? So for me, uh, I was actually uh, working at Pat Stakes, but the, uh, the night before, I was uh, looking on Craigslist and I would always look under TV, film and video and look for any, uh, any, any new ads that pop up and stuff like that. And I saw MTV's Real World is casting in Philadelphia at the Raven Lounge. It was an open casting call. So uh, uh, Raven Lounge was a place I, I frequently went. So uh, I had no problem um, going over there and just giving it a shot because I knew it was either for me, I was going like career decision time. It's either you're going to, you know, make a move like this or do something like go to the army or, or, or something like that. That just happened to come through first. And I remember I was standing in a line for about, you know, 10 blocks, how it stretched down about 50, 70,000 people, something like that. It was a casting call, open casting call. And uh, then I just noticed everybody would get tapped on the shoulder to go home kind of thing. And I, I just started staying there. I think, you know, it was presenting it a mystery a little bit where, you know, the hair was all in front of the face and you know, it was actually a little longer than it is now, but uh, it was all in front of my face and all you saw was the sunglasses and the nose ring. And I think that might have presented an element that uh, they kind of wanted on the show. Uh, I was fresh out of a punk rock man. I, uh, I, I tried I, and it worked and when the day I got the call, I was literally like, um, I didn't know what to say. And the first thing the producer said were like, are you really sure you want to do this? And I just, I didn't know what to say because I was like, wow, did that really work kind of thing? And it did. And I was just completely taken back by it. And then the, uh, 
the whole charade began. So that's how it was for me. That was my my coming to it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> it's still crazy to me. It's still crazy to me how like they took eight completely different people and put them together. And uh, it's, you know, I, I, like we had drama and we had disagreements and clearly, you know, and we had so much, so many more things that happened that they didn't even show. Um, yeah, there was tons, tons more angst than, than meets the eye. And they made it look pretty anxious and pretty dramatic. So imagine that times like a hundred when you're, when you're <laughs> in the situation and you have to react and um, you know, you got to kind of like roll with the changes as they, as, as they happen and as they're going. Let me, let me ask you this. Would you ever, would you do it again? If you got a call for another reality show tomorrow, would you, would you do it again? Mm, I guess depending on what it, what, what it was, I, I'm not sure. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely wishy-washy about it. Something like that. Definitely not. Like yeah, something where you, you yeah, something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. But uh, something where I, you know, maybe compete or you know, like like now I do a lot of celebrity boxing, so that's a that's a platform I compete on, like in a fighting platform and stuff like that. So, and I'm known as you know the kid from the real world DC. So, I guess uh, yeah, I, I hear it a little more often than you do now. You know what I mean? But uh, I had a I had a whole crazy journey just getting to this point, and uh, uh, I'm blessed to still be here, man. I don't know if you. I got saved and uh, born again. I know, I know you were at one point and all that. Yeah. And it was just a, a, a rocky road for me at one point because it was uh, nothing but a downward spiral, you know, two, three years afterwards for me. It, mm-hmm. it was, uh, I remember coming out to see you a couple of times in LA mm-hmm. and we were just, you know, talk about things. And I had that script I was trying to pitch and the idea for a supernatural scripted reality show we were talking about. Now they have that, what we do in the shadow show. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of like what we were what we were what we were talking about. Remember, yeah, like a right. supernatural scripted reality show. I knew it would work just with the right with the right characters behind it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. Damn. If only we knew at that point. <laughs> if only we knew how to produce a show. Yeah, yeah. I might be able to do it now. Nowadays. Exactly. Not, exactly. Not <laughs> exactly. I mean that that was that was our our entrance, our springboard into production. Uh, that's yeah. us getting to see how behind the scenes work because we were getting to play ourselves behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, and, you know, it, it was just an awe moment for all of us because it's like, okay, this is how this goes down. And then the, the ending factor, the, you know, the, you know how you got to edit the movie and, and stuff like that is, is how it turns out. And man, mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I, you know, I have no regrets. I loved it all, you know? Yeah, yeah. Even yeah, I think I, it, like, I think I like my privacy too much. I don't think I would do it now. Again. Yeah, I don't think sure. I would do it now. No, Mm-mm. I don't. No, we're too. We're you know we're too used to living freely and uh, not having to you know answer to a certain guideline. Anymore. Answer to a guideline, or just make a phone call every time you want to leave the house. Oh, that wow. too. Oh really? yeah, the whole the whole no contact thing. We were people were called. What? So it was twenty. It was twenty ten, right, or twenty two thousand nine. And when, when people would ask for our phone numbers, we would give them our emails because we couldn't give out the house number. And every time like somebody like would, would, would write us an email, they would say, it's so 2010, how you said, here's my email instead of my phone number kind of thing. Yeah. I always thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We had to, we had to call the, the bat phone every time we wanted to leave the house and get <laughs> approval because they had to put a crew together to then follow you wherever you were going. Uh, but also we couldn't, we couldn't listen to the radio. What? We couldn't watch TV. Uh, we couldn't- There's no TV, yeah. There's no TV, cause, cause number one, how boring is it watching somebody watch TV? And number <laughs> two, all that stuff is copyrighted. So you can't have, you can't you have- can't music. be anything in the background, yeah. You can't listen to anything that is a potential rights issue. So we would have to like- That threw off my whole groove. Like, that threw off my whole groove at sometimes yeah. when we were at the bar yeah. and we would like put the jukebox on and stuff like that. And they would like shut it off. And I'm like, <laughs> Man, like I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was rough. I feel like no music was the, the, the hardest thing for me. 
Wow. Yeah, it was definitely hard. Uh, no movies, no music, uh, just a lot of time to yourself. To, and that's when we had this time to ourselves to think about what we wanted to do. We would either, you know, I, I would do a lot of writing and I still do a lot of writing, like, you know, scripts, comics, characters, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. now I get to portray that a little bit in the uh, celebrity boxing platform, the storylines and stuff like that. So it's, so it's all full circle. And uh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's dope, man. Damn, they were they were really strict with that stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. they were really strict. Well, and and also we had to be back by a certain time, or else we got fined. Like they would give us a weekly stipend, oh, yeah. and yeah. then we would they would take money away from us if we were out too late, or if we didn't come back when we said we were going to come back, or if if we broke any of the other rules. Yeah, I think I officially. Uh had the the most fines in the house i think you did i think you, I think, broke, I think you broke the most rules yeah I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, so here's the thing like at first I, I i was gonna i was following the rules because you know i never followed rules in my life and i'm thinking this is the one time i have to but then i kind of figured they gave them the rules to break them yeah so i had i had a i had a little bit of a lot perception on that so if i was like i'm gonna be this you know portraying i might as well be it all the way you know, but it's it, it, it was a it was an immature thing for me to do for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, it no, it just messed with the diversity. It would it would mess with the uh, you know, the element that, that came home at a certain time. I understood that. I was always like, would we have to be in at one thirty, Mike? Or one o'clock? Was it one o'clock? I, I think it was I thought it was I thought it was one thirty or two, right? No, it wasn't two. It wasn't it two. two. I remember the, the, the D C bars were open till three and we were pumped oh. about that until we found out we couldn't stay there until three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah. know, and that's like one of the things they used to reel us in. DC bars are, they're open until 3 a.m. Oh, and by yeah. the way, you got a curfew. You got to be in at one. I was like, yeah. ah. Yeah, maybe it that. was one. Maybe it was one. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Production. Production tricks. Damn. I've learned them. I've loved them. Yeah. I try to master them. It's, uh, it's cool. I work with a couple of local crews out here on, uh, on different indie stuff. Uh, no union things or anything like that. Are you SAG, AFRA, anything like that, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. So I got my SAG card, um, I think it was like seven years ago now. And, uh, and, and that was when I did, I did a couple of guest spots and then I did this Disney show. And uh, so I got my SAG card. And uh, it's oh. funny, in the beginning, I was Mike, my acting name was Mike C. Manning because I, I, I almost didn't talk about real world. I was trying to separate myself because yeah, yeah. in my mind, I was like, I didn't want casting directors to think of me as the reality TV guy. So I actually didn't talk about it. It wasn't on my resume. I didn't have it on my social media. So I kind of hid from it. And then as the years went on and I became more comfortable with like the resume I was building, then I, I started, especially recently, I've, I've be, sort of become proud of that origin story. Um, you know, having that like, being at this average kid from Colorado being taken out of that world by a reality show. And then in my opinion, like making the most of it. So actually I'm pretty, it's actually come full circle to where Damn I dropped right. the C in SAG. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, I'm just, I'm Mike Manning again. So oh, okay. Not, like, you dropped the C. Nice. I dropped the oh, C. Nice. I'm nice. just Mike Manning nice. and, and okay. it came full circle. Yeah. So yeah, that's, and these are the times I, I'm a big believer in the numbers aligning and speaking things into existence and vision boards and stuff like that. This is a complete full circle, you know, real life experience of that. Don't worry. It's, it's kind of like still, still blowing my mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like we were, uh, we were lucky. Uh, the show definitely opened doors for me and, uh, you know, it's also, I'm also glad that it was in DC because I feel like if we had been in Cancun, I mean, yeah, it would have been fun, but, uh, I know for me, my storyline would have been very, very different and, <laughs> yeah. uh, cause I, I ended up working in politics a little bit because like in the show and, and that was a lot of my storyline. So I, I, they sh sort of showed the positive aspect of my character because editing, they can make you whoever they want in editing. Cause there were plenty of times where I was an asshole. There were plenty of times I was the nice guy. And they showed, because my character was the nice guy on the show, mm -hmm. they showed more of that than, mm -hmm. than me being the asshole. Uh, it could have been very different. So if we, if we had been in Cancun and, you know, I was 
shirtless or naked all the time and just walking around with tequila and it, you know, it would have been a very different, you know, experience for me. Yeah. yeah I, I've, always, uh, <laughs> I've always thought that, you know, um, I would have, I would have liked a place like Cancun or, or, or St. Thomas even, or something like that. But, uh, uh, DC would definitely say it's one of those places that earned a, a true, true piece in my heart. Because uh, this was, because uh, we just learned so much. And like you're saying, you ventured into politics after and did so much campaign work and stuff like that. And uh, me just working as a musician in the area, it's, it's, it's hard not to, to have a certain love for the place. Uh, but I, all, I, re- I remember saying like, man, I wish it would have been like an island or something like that. So I, I, I hear you on that. I, but I hear you on that because I don't know. I think there was just more culture for us to discover there and more pieces of ourselves we could find in that city than opposed to like an island or something like that. It would have just been like, you know, straight party and well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, like you said, like it would be a lot of crazy shit going on. Like, yeah. 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 How did it feel to always have, like, you're always being, being, being watched. Like, wherever you go whoever person you're sleeping with and hooking up with friends you're fighting with and being friends with like like how how was it like to always being feel how did it feel to always being watched hmm. you take this uh, <laughs> all right so <laughs> at first you know I, I was definitely a certain type of uh uh, ego juice flower and loved the the attention and all the of the situation and I would blow kisses to the cameras and <laughs> and, and and stuff like that. We we would do all little things just to annoy them because they would annoy us. This was the birth of social media. We had our we had paparazzi that followed us. I don't think any other cast really had the heckling and and stuff like that 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 we had. Am I right, Mike? It was just like unheard of so that oh, yeah, made, no, they were... that made us think that this is more than it than it, than it is kind of thing like that, that so that had me definitely just like up here on that you know ego juice kind of thing and and obviously that's the situation they want you to put you in because they know you're you're going to respond a certain way mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. no that's exactly right and it's all like it's hard to not at that point we're, we're all 21, 22, 23, whatever it is, early 20s. And we went from our lives where, you know, even if we were big fish in small ponds, like we still, we went to DC, you have cameras everywhere. Like Josh said, the paparazzi and the photos and everything. And, and it's hard to not get caught up in, oh man, they're doing that for me. Like, this is kind of cool. Yeah. This is, yeah. but, uh, but I feel like that quickly faded when, for me at least, that quickly faded when I realized I went through some like some personal shit on the show and when I realized I laid in bed like the first or second week and I was like damn like my mom's gonna see this show my grandma's gonna see the show everybody's gonna see the show and I can't hide or pretend to be somebody else for three and a half months like it's not I that's impossible I can't do that Mm -hmm. so I just remember laying in bed being like shit the world is about to get to know me better than some of my friends know me because there's a camera there all the time. And, uh, you know, and that was kind of scary for me and also humbling for me because it gave me the permission to go on, start that journey and go on that journey and be like, all right, you know what, I'm going to take these three and a half months away from home with seven people that I have never met before. And I'm going to get to know me. I'm going to take a walk with me. I'm going to get to know me. I'm going to, you know, make some choices and decide some things and see who I really am. And, uh, and that's, I think, why they had me on the show. And that's why I think um, I would be grateful for the show and I wouldn't change the fact that, that I did it because above, you know, the, the exposure and the fans and everything else, I feel like for me, it forced me to become comfortable with who I was and myself uh, in a very, you know, personal way that I wouldn't have otherwise done if I stayed in Colorado, I think. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. It, it, I mean, like, I always say, you know, everybody should have that time to themselves to try and find themselves. So it's, 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 
it's a docu series it's a mm-hmm. docu drama of mm-hmm. eight people living life on their own terms <laughs> with no rules kind of at at somebody else's leisure and because they thought we were interesting and you know when you're put there it's a uh oh man it's a hell of a feeling and it like i said it just it opens so many doors and you just you just try to keep rolling with them as they come and you roll with the punches and the highs and the lows and the the finding of yourself and when you finally do discover it it's a it's a blessing all in disguise now after you you both were on the show like do you do you feel like the show helped you as you know help helped you along the lines for like film and television and actually becoming a different person or or like the same person but you know more uh, about yourself now than you you did when when you went in the show so i gotta say i kind of i gotta i gotta piggyback off of what mike said when he said uh he he put himself out there as mike c manning to mm-hmm. to 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 show that 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 wasn't that same guy from the real real world kind of thing. It's exactly what I did with the Saving Jones brand. It's why I'm Josh Jones Cologne uh, because we were automatically stamped yeah. as just people that acted up on camera on MTV. So when it came to to us having talent, it would get brushed to the side really really quick. So all things that we had to do was you know keep building our talent in different ways. Um, whether it be the indie projects or the, the ones that, you know, are SAG and stuff like that, that Mike does and the soap propers. And he had the greatest training for it in the world. Mm-hmm. It was the first, uh, so it's, 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 it's a light, it's a real life soap opera, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. 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 No, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, I, for, for as much help as it helped me become comfortable with myself and really know about, you know, it was for the first time in my life, I started thinking about myself as a brand and, mm-hmm. and, and what I was, you know, I moved to Los Angeles um, after I did the show and I was like, okay, this is my brand. How do I want to come across? But like Josh said, I mean, I, I, I didn't have real world anywhere. Like I didn't yeah. tell anybody cause I didn't want to be known. They asked me to do the challenge and I said no, because yeah. I didn't want to be known as the reality Same. TV kid, the agent, my agent at the time, I asked him, I was like, oh, like I called him. I was like, hey, this could be kind of good exposure, right? Like get me back on the show, like get me on TV. Like I'm not shooting anything else right now. And he goes, Mike, if you do that, I'm going to drop you because I represent actors. I don't represent reality TV people. And I was like, and that was kind of a, a, an awakening for me. I was like, shit, you're right. Yeah. And, um, but I feel like now, like, them. well, I feel like everybody has an origin story. And recently I've accepted the fact that this was part of my origin story. And nowadays I feel like, you know, I feel like I've earned my seat at the table in Hollywood and I feel like I have enough credits to back it up to where if anybody thinks that I'm just some stupid reality TV person, then they, I don't want to work with them anyway. Yeah, that's right. 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 No, you're not going to respect anybody that doesn't respect Mm -hmm. you, where you came from, how it started, the, the, the platform that it provided or, or anything like that. Uh, people are quick to to judge it and and give them lorkies, but these are, but here you go. Here are two guys that have done everything just to show their talent, whether it been I, I'm acting, fighting, indie movies, the, these other the, all the other films you've done, Mike. It just shows that it's more than than it was more than just meets the eye, and and everybody starts somewhere, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, what was like your first thoughts? when you saw Josh and then after you got to know Josh, like what were your thoughts on him? <laughs> oh, wait, no, like today or on the show? Well, no, on the show. <laughs> on the show. Okay. Well, oh, no, I, mean, I want to know both. No, no, no. I mean, today, like, l- listen, man, you're the coolest guy I'll ever know. Uh, I just like, th- th- it's kind of cool right now talking right. And like talking about an experience that happened 10 years ago for me or 11 years ago. Um, it's kind of a blast from the past and it's really kind of cool to see Josh here. And, and I haven't seen Josh. I mean, he saw me, he came out to LA and visited, but that was still what, like six years ago, seven years ago. Probably like seven been, years ago. Yeah. Had to be seven or eight years ago. Cause I've been yeah. in, you didn't come to my, this house. I think you came uh-huh. to my place. Yeah. So 
like seven yeah, years it was, ago. A, it was like an apartment complex. Yeah, yeah. Damn. So maybe like seven or eight years ago. Anyway, it's uh, um, so this is like really cool and this really means a lot to me. And that's why I was excited to do the interview. Um, when I saw Josh in the house, <laughs> when I first met him in, in, on the show, uh, in DC, I was like, who is this guy? Who is, and I feel like maybe Josh, you, it's not, I'm not the first one to say that. Like, I was like, man, this guy seems like full of himself. Like he seems, he's so, he, he's just so, he's, he has the shades on and the, he's like guarded and he's, you know, it, like he's trying to be like, who is this guy I think he is? But I will say the more I got to know Josh and the more I've gotten to know him over the years, um, there's really a, a kind, compassionate, uh, very thoughtful person underneath that exterior that people, you know, and it's, and it's like, that's why I think that we've remained friends is because that's, those are the type of people that you want in your life, you know? Yeah. I think. Josh, well, thanks. Same question, yeah. Josh. So much. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. How do I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the asshole at the wedding that gives like the good toast. Yeah. And everybody's like, screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, seeing you today, Mike, and, and just all you've accomplished and how we both came out on the other side of this, because there's definitely another route. A lot of people that, a lot of people go in it and it's the dark one there's a lot of people that commit suicide from the loss of the attention and whatever there's a, a different a different kind of vibe and all that so it's um it's so good to see you today and it's like that's how you know that we we, we like established a, a true friendship there because we can pick up right where we left off and they always say those are the friends that you know hang around the most and those are the friends that you want around the most kind of thing and um, that, that was always special to me. But, you know, same about the, the, the caring, compassion. And, um, you know, we showed that to each other a lot because being in that situation, it's, it's a whole psychotherapy, um, living in a human fishbowl, being judged kind of thing. So to be there for each other when, 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 when those things happen and they did happen on the show after the show, stuff like that. And that, that just throws a bond you, that, that, that you can't break kind of thing. And, um, when I first saw you in the house, I just, I automatically thought, uh, it, it's just a, a conservative, uh, Christian boy. That's automatically, that's automatically what I thought of you. Blue eyed conservative Christian boy from the farm or, you know, the mountains or, the middle of nowhere <laughs> somewhere with somewhere with, with you know with something to say i knew you had i knew you had something i knew i knew there was something because we all had a little extra something that yeah. they just released on everybody like our hidden our, our not our hidden thing but our the things that were about us you know yeah so uh that, that, that was my that was my first uh impression of, of mike <laughs> that's hilarious I, I I knew we were gonna get along though. I, I definitely knew we were gonna get along. It's like it, it's like I first thing I do is I, I size people up. You know, I'm seeing who's gonna give me a problem, who's uh who's who's got the the, the balls to kind of give me a problem kind of thing. Like I'm 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 checking out the whole situation. I'm observing, and that's exactly what I did. But you know, when I walked in the house, and I remember Andrew the obviously, you know, the the the, the loud and un outspoken one automatically says you know josh walks in the house and automatically thinking he's the coolest person in the house which he is but i don't like him knowing that yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like i was like all right um i totally get that but but like you're judging a book by its cover i look like this because i was i was raised a certain way i come from yeah. a certain place i talk a certain way you know and, and I, I take pride in how i look so however you want to judge that is how you can judge that. But like Mike said, when you get to know me, there's an honest, care, kind, caring, okay. compassionate person. If you show that towards him, yeah. now I'm somebody that can put a wall up real quick. You know, yeah. I can't break it down that quick either. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, there's only certain people you want, to, you want to show that to. And we realize at that point when we're all in that situation that we're about to show the world. <laughs> Yeah. So there's no, there's, 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 there's no, there's, there's no fake in this, you know what I mean? And especially, you know, uh, one thing they told me that was very confusing 
was was don't act. And I was like, I, I don't get that because at this point, you know, I'm sure we all wanted something to do with acting. We wanted to be in front of the camera. We wanted to see how it was. We wanted to see how we reacted. Acting is reacting. Mm -hmm. And it's that we, we, we all wanted a little bit of that. So that confused me. And then I realized, you know, as it was going on, it's, you know, they want me to act up. You know, they want me to act up. So I did a repeat, <laughs> repeating of acting up and they just happened to use it the way they wanted to. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like, you know, with Drewby and Ty and Emily and Erica and Callie and uh, who am I forgetting? Ashley. Yeah, uh, and Emily, did I say Emily? Uh, I feel like we all, it was almost like a fraternity that we pledged and we all went through, it's like trial by fire. We, we went through that experience. It's, it's an experience that you can't really, I mean, you can describe it, but like you either know or you don't know what it feels like to live in a fishbowl. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And even people yeah. that got, got on my nerves, uh, you know, like Ashley and I, we just, there were times where we wanted to headbutt each other. <laughs> Same. Again and yeah, again there's and again. plenty of times where we want to kill each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but like even that, like it would be, it's you, you you sort of, if I were to see her out in public, I'd give her a hug and it's like, we understand what it was like to go through all that together in our house during our season. There's like this camaraderie and this like unspoken, you know, bond that you'll have with people that you go through that type of experience with. It was a time of our lives that was frozen in time. And we yeah. all can can look back on that and and learn from it and the lessons that came along with it and how we 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 got to where we are now and be thankful that we're still here to talk about it in the in the crazy world we live in today. I think real world. I think Paramount TV is is re upping the show. I think they're going to start shooting a version of the show, and I think they're releasing all the old seasons. I don't know if I want to say that because i don't know if i want people watching my this season yeah but yeah i think yeah. i think paramount is uh is it's either starting to air the old seasons or in addition to that they're actually going to start shooting the show again i think okay yeah so i uh recently just was scrolling through a couple different you know uh streaming platforms mm -hmm. and if if you go back i i'm surprised if you go back far enough you, you can find it sometimes. Oh, okay. Right. Here and there, you know what I mean? I've, uh, I can't say, uh, it's not weird seeing yourself back like that. Like, just, just at a point in time. I remember saying, like, damn, like, I was just so pompous that it, that it actually made me upset. And it's like, it, it kind of, it's the, the cockiness they took for confidence or the confidence they took for cockiness. And just because, you know, the exterior is rough yeah. or, or whatever it is, like that's, that's what they're going to do kind of thing. Well, everybody you know? needed to fill their, yeah. their, like play their role, right? And, and the producers yeah, knew exactly sure. what they were doing. The casting process, mm -hmm. we had to answer that. We had to meet with a therapist, oh, what? We had to take an IQ test. Yeah. We had, you what? know, they knew exactly what they were doing. Oh my God, get out. To put those types of people together in the house to fulfill that role to have that in common, to have this disagreement over here. Like they knew exactly what they were doing. Oh yeah, man. It's the, it's the, the basis of scenarios, yeah. the joy of putting people in scenarios and that, and that alone, it's a feat in itself, organizing it all and getting it at the same time and at the right time. Cause there's plenty of nights. Like there was a night, there was a night that me and my boy, Tony Luke, who passed away, God rest the soul. He passed away like three, four years ago, something like that. We literally put somebody through a window. We put somebody through a window. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they didn't, they just, they weren't there. And they were kind of like mad that they missed the fight kind of thing. And I was trying to like, you know, I don't, I don't know. It was just like little, little, little things like that would, would get to me. But them being like 10 seconds behind when something happened already, that was just a little, I would take I would get taken back by it. It, it, it would shut something down in me for some reason. Mm -hmm. That's dope. It's cool that you uh that you're born again. I know I know that you you were talking about that. Like you you found like God and faith and, and like that's a pretty big part of your life now. Yes, uh, it's a it's a huge part of my life. I was actually uh just really just 
headed down a road of darkness after uh, kind of everything went. And due to uh, personal vice and demons, it, it, it took me down a dark path. And it wasn't until uh, somebody grabbed me, shook me, and put a Bible in my hand that, that things actually started to go my way. And uh, from that point on, um, I've, I've just, just given my life to the Lord in, 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 in my kind of way, not putting God in a box or saying I'm a certain religion because re- religiosity does get me very upset because nobody should put rules or, 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 or God in a box or say that this exists because of, um, you know, anything else. But um, it's, it's, it's their choice to believe what they want. But I, I know what I believe and it's, it's changed my life in, in the best kind of way. That's cool, man. I'm happy for you. Well, Thank you're, you. That's you're, awesome. You're Christian too, right, Mike? Yeah, I am. And yeah. I uh, I mean, Christianity has, has been a big part of my life since I was little. Um, it's I've seen it do amazing things in people's lives and change their lives for the better. So it's, um, for me, the one thing about Christianity is that I I get very angry when people use the Bible and religion as a weapon um, yeah. because because I've seen it do amazing things and because I, I hold it to such a high regard when it does the opposite and when people use it to discriminate and to judge and to belittle and to make people, you know, just to hurt people, mm-hmm. I feel like screaming at the top of my lungs, running to the tallest peak, being like, screw you, screw everybody for using my God as a weapon and for bastardizing the name of my God because that isn't my God. My God is love. My God is acceptance. My God is, is all of these amazing things. How dare you use, like put your ego in the, in the way and, and take that and like twist and manipulate and poison that message. Like, how dare you, you have no right to do that. So if you can't tell, I, I, that still gets me worked up. Uh, Yeah. It's, uh, I I feel the same. I feel the same exact way. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 I've seen it do so many miracle. I've seen so many miracles yeah. and, you know, I can't even begin to explain how, you know, I'm one of them because I'm definitely a guy, you know, maybe shouldn't be here, but according to, to, to God's plan, I am. And, uh, according to the world's plan, I would have been gone years ago, but I'm still here for a reason. And, uh, I got a story to tell and I'm just happy. I, I, I get to tell it and live to tell it there you go yeah Josh. Mate, you have hardships so now you have a testimony <laughs> amen amen and then now i'm getting you know i'm i'm an inspiration to others and that's that's there's there's no feeling like that overall i try to do everything i can just to make a difference in people's lives i do toy drives around christmas time i you know do a socks for the homeless campaign i have been to the point of you know darkness and no return so that i know what it's like to, to 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 actually be there have it all and see it all get taken away and um like i said miracles straight miracles and for somebody to uh make that their own and use it to hate it's uh yeah no it's not gonna fly with me yeah yeah Thanks, well man. if that happens i'll send you to box them and I'll be well, like, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing these days. So yeah. it could, it could, it could, so uh, it could help. <laughs> there you go, Josh. You could, you could train Mike out of box. Train me, man. I think I might, I might I'm be doing sure. this movie. I'm pretty sure. What? Ready to go? Well, I was gonna say I might be doing this movie in uh, a couple months where I'm gonna have to be a boxer. So I might be oh. calling you up for some pointers. Uh, well, you know, I got you. Whatever you need, brother. Whatever you need, I'll show you the road. So uh, you're, you're a natural athlete, you know that you'll, you'll, you'll catch on real quick. And, um, that's awesome. I actually, I, I have a, a series that I'm writing called fourth district South. It's a, mm-hmm. it's about, you know, Philly in the seventies and when the birth of hip hop and the triple X industry actually, uh, you know, took off and stuff like that. But, uh, there's that, uh, my character is, it plays a boxer when he's younger too. So, uh, we'll both be able to step into that role and I get to step into it almost, you know, it's usually about four or five times a year with celebrity boxing. So being able to, you know, and being from Philly and having like somebody like your Philly superhero be uh, Rocky Balboa (laughs) and for you to, to, to actually portray that 
uh, out uh, in front of your supporters, friends, family, and you know we get to doing on a bigger platform now for network and internet streaming services and and you know with COVID it it definitely put a halt on things, but it also put a lot of uh, uh, things into perspective for us. And uh, we we winded up you know landing a really really big fight. You know our our CEO Damon Fellman's like our Vince McMahon. We have our own, you know, it's the it's the CBA. We have our own WWE going on. When he nails these these big fights like that, uh, people like us, uh, we we get we get time to shine, and and it's more work for us. And uh, the fact that you know Aaron Carter is now fighting Lamar Odom, who is a basketball player and a natural no athlete. No way! Um, yes. Aaron yeah, Aaron Carter's yes. fighting Lamar Odom. Yeah, what is yeah. he thinking? So, so check this out, Mike. He was supposed to fight me a year ago. Never signed the contract. Okay. Like there's a video, there's a video, like everything. Oh, like that video never hilarious. just. I, so now you're going to, now you're going to, you know, come sign to the same per, same company I'm with, but not fight me. You're going to fight the 6'10 giant who can literally reach you from across the ring. What is he like, thinking? But, but you want to showcase fighting ability. Why don't you show, why don't, why don't you fight somebody in your weight class? That, that makes more sense, but whatever, yeah. bro. I'll, I'll be there yeah. on June 12th, just like him. I ain't worried about it. He's wow. kind of uh, not all there, so yeah. I'm not really sweating it like that. Yeah. It's yeah. a shame because I think him and Lamar are both supposed to be in recovery. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I hope everything's okay because I know the, the torture and the torment that, um, that, that addiction can bring, you know? And uh, I just – that's why we do celebrity boxing. Celebrity boxing is uh, something that's been going on for, you know, a good 20 – maybe 18, 20 years. It was a show on Fox back in the day. But now in the past 10 years, Damon Feldman does like, you know, the local shows with, you know, local guys who've been on reality shows or actors or anything like that. And he's used it to build this platform of celebrity fights. Mm -hmm. And now um, with, uh, you know, the signing of, you know, new people and the more stuff that we do, it's, it's just, it's starting to take this launch again. And, it was taken as a joke before. It really wasn't, you know, scripted or it wasn't scripted enough or it was kind of like just not serious. But now we have, you know, serious fighters. We have serious fights. But now something like Lamar and Aaron comes along and kind of, you know, questions that a little bit, but they're both coming to brawl and they're both coming to fight and they're both fighting for their lives. Recovery is something you need to build back your mind and build back yeah. your body and learn how to think clear again. There's nothing, I'm telling you nothing that does that better than boxing. And it's mind, body, and soul. The art of blocking isn't so much about making the person just, you know, lay, lay them out when you hit them. I'm talking about you will miss every time you swing at me and then I'm going to knock you down. But that's a whole, mm. it's a whole can of worms. I've never felt any high like it, never. And I get to just be a part of this again. I'm truly blessed to play myself behind the scenes again. And now I get to put a little flair on it. I get to show my acting ability. I get to show, you know, how, how, how big of a wrestling fan I was and how much we can incorporate to this. Because we, we incorporate a wrestling element with boxing and that's why it's doing so good. We, we you know, we, we bring the hype, we bring the live, you know? That showmanship, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, 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 that, and that's a big deal. I think Mike Tyson just proved it by fighting Roy Jones Jr. and having somebody like Jake Paul and Nate Robinson fight beforehand when you, you can do it on a streaming platform like that and still have crazy, crazy amounts of money to be made. And, mm -hmm. you know, somebody like Damon Feldman has, who has been capitalizing on this for years locally, you know what I mean? And, you know, he just happens to be a good friend of mine. I did my first fight for him 10 years ago. I've refereed content creation, storylines, creative specialists. I've done it all for him. Whatever he needed me to do, I did. And now I get to be on this this airplane again and I get to do it with a clear conscience, clear head, um, and, you know, a, a, a substance free life. And that's even more beautiful, you know? That's cool, man. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Well, thank you. Yeah. That's, me, that's, and, uh, me and Josh are like huge fans of, of the WWE and wrestling. What about you, Mike? You, you, you like wrestling at all? Uh, so I read in high school, I wrestled, yes, he but it was the other kind of wrestling though. It was like the collegiate yeah. wrestling. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so I, so I, I like, I respect it and I re respect the athleticism. Um, I don't watch like WWE, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but I think that, I think I, I, I would like it if I, if I did, you know what I mean? Okay. I watched that show <laughs> yeah. Glow 
that show oh, yeah. oh it's awesome <laughs> oh it's awesome <laughs> well it's so good yeah. and it's like it how great about... is mark maron <laughs> mark maron in that mark maron i'm sorry I'm like mark mark maron he's the guy with the mustache yeah yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's yeah. So he, good. He, he's so i think good. he's such a he's oh, so my good. god the he's levels that he plays character. especially in season in season one he's sort of like the art archetype boss you know whatever but in season two the levels that he plays as he's falling in love with his like the lead yes. wrestler for mm-hmm. Bruce. yeah so yeah. good so good as 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 a sport as an actor we look at that and we're like i can't like it comes out of my mouth damn he's like damn he's good timing yeah. Everything. It's just so on point. I watched all of his stand-ups. He's, he's definitely one of the comedians that, that I look up to because he's, he's mastered it. And he's been around. You could tell he's been around the block a little bit. And he's just so wise and knowledgeable. You can just tell kind of thing. He mm-hmm. just knows what he's doing. And mm-hmm. uh, that, it just bleeds through on his, uh, in his work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was great, though. What it, what I'm... Glow is great. Who's your favorite character in Glow? Oh, uh, Glow. I love Glow. Yeah. I, I like all of them, man. I feel like it's, I, I think it's a true ensemble cast. I feel it really like is. It's, um, every single personality and even mm-hmm. characters that season one, I was like, why, why are they even here? You know, season two, they sort of go deeper into the storyline. And I'm like, I mean, I, I respect, I like that character. I like that story. I respect that so much more. And I couldn't see the show succeeding without them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was such it was such good it was such good storytelling. Yeah. It was just such good storytelling. You kind of couldn't look away. Now everybody mm-hmm. who looks at pro wrestling automatically cringes a little bit. <laughs> they do the cringy thing or they do the the, the 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 weary thing or whatever it is. So in order for people to stay engaged with something like that, they had to make sure they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The writing cannot could not be better. It could not be better just all the way through. Uh, I love Liberty Bell's character. Yeah. Liberty Bell, yeah. it, it, it's it, it's it's definitely one that would automatically <laughs> grab a crowd. I, I work on a lot of face heel routines now, so mm-hmm. therefore it's like I'm looking for the good guy. I'm looking for the bad guy. I'm playing the good guy. I'm playing the bad guy. So when I see it, like you know, I I I, I geek out. <laughs> isn't the uh, isn't the isn't the Miz? Isn't he a wrestler? Yeah, he, he is he, on a on a way. Yeah, he's he's in WWE now. He, and he, he was he, his, just, he just won the title. He just won the yeah, WWE okay. title. And his origin story was was real world, basically. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. It yeah. was. And uh, so, talk about somebody that just took it. You know, what I mean, it's just. And I was on a uh, a podcast the other day. According to Woods, he does a lot of uh, wrestlers and stuff like that. And the first thing he brought up was the fact that I was an alum, a real world alum, and the Miz, the real world alum, had just mm-hmm. won the. Uh, the, the title so that was cool and uh tied in like that and uh kind of like me i mean i just I, I i won the middleweight championship about going on two years now and i and i and i still have it so uh pre-covid post-covid it's a it's a good feeling to have it's a, it's a good nice. thing to have around you know what I mean? nice i uh one of the few self-tape auditions i had during quarantine mm-hmm. was uh to play an amateur wrestler yeah. and this is dude, we should do it. we should totally do it like i got dude, i would i, I got so I many love, characters <laughs> i got so many characters now it's not I even feel, funny, bro. i mean I already got one it's perfect for you honestly <laughs> honestly i feel like i would be i would be down for that because this was right in the beginning of quarantine this is when everybody is just realizing maybe in like maybe like june or july like in the in the summer when everybody realized that this quarantine covid was gonna last at least through august mm-hmm. so yeah everybody's dyeing their hair, cutting their hair, doing, you know, just whatever they wanted to do, knowing that they're not going to see anybody for two more months. Yeah, so, yeah. so I, and I, at the same time, <clears throat> I got this, this audition for uh, to, to a self tape to play this amateur wrestler. So I was like, I was like, screw it. I'm never going to have this opportunity again. I, oh, yeah. I'm going to go for it. So I shaved the sides of my head, almost like, like shaved the sides, kept the top long. And then I, I did a, a lightning bolt on the side. Nice. Oh, you went, you, my... went, you went, you went vision quest. I went vision quest. I went vision quest. quest. I went full vision, vision quest. quest. Yeah. And I was Dude. like, for, and I was like, I really, I went for it. Cause I was like, when am I going to be able to do this again? And, uh, and I yeah. saved that audition tape just so I can look back and know that if I were a wrestler, that would be my look. Yeah. Oh man. That's so awesome. I love yeah. that. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I went for it, man. I went. I was like, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, like yeah. I said, I mean, we're, we're, we got we got an underground fight club. We 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 do uh, celebrity boxing. Uh, there's a there's a whole bunch of characters that you know are waiting to 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 be portrayed. So yep. if you ever want to mess around and do stuff like that, you know me, I'm always creatively open the ball. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And you um you got uh heart the horror films coming out too. Like the last time I had you on talking to you, you got you got a horror film you're currently working on now, Slap Slap Face. Yeah, so Slap Face is a film that I produced. Um oh. and I'm I I in the film I play the older brother of this kid that essentially befriends a monster that lives in the woods. And so um, I can't say anything yet, but, but next month uh, we're premiering the film next month. And uh, I can't wait to see be, it. I can't wait to see it already. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think it'll come Sounds out great. later this year. It'll be released to the public. So I'm really excited about that one. That's yeah. good, bro. That I just fun. actually, I just got word that I'm working on the sequel to Human Hibachi. Human Hibachi was a, an, an indie film that yeah. got released I think, earlier this year. So yeah. it's going to be a Human Hibachi 2. Yeah. And the director, Mario, reached out to me. And he's, he's, he needs me for the sequel, so I'm going to make sure I'm around for that. Oh, I think man, it's in that's like, awesome. Uh, I think it's like end of March, maybe. That, that's going to be really cool. I, lo I mean, I, was, I love, ain't nothing funner than working on a horror set or just being that. involved in it in any way possible. I mean, yo, Mike, the one time I came down to LA was Halloween for that reason. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, because I wanted to see LA around Halloween. I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's just, like, certain mm -hmm. things I wanted to experience, you know, around Halloween time. And LA yeah. was definitely one of them, you know. That's cool. Um, yeah, I love Halloween, man. This year didn't exist, obviously. I know, right? I know, it sucks it so bad. Oh. It just sucks so bad, man. It's fine, we're it almost just, through. Uh, we're almost through. Wah, wah, yep, wah, exactly. Wah. We're getting there. We are. We're, we're getting close. there. We're close. <laughs> stay strong. Stay vigilant. Stay. Stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your mask, everybody. No. Where are, yeah. So I just came back from Florida, and there's like only people that are wearing masks down there are the people that work at the stores. There's nobody <laughs> else wearing masks. Really? I was down there, and I was wearing a mask, but there's not many people wearing them. My producer yeah. and his wife, who's very asthmatic, not wearing a mask, and More they're mask. fine. Huh. I, it's just weird. It's just weird. I don't know. Well, the numbers are going it's, down. I mean, the numbers. Thank uh, goodness. I thank think goodness. the closures yeah. happen in Los Angeles. I think our numbers, last time I looked, are down back to where they were in like June or July. So I feel like okay. things are definitely better. People are getting vaccinated, or they already had it, mm -hmm. yeah. or they just you know, they have the antibodies or whatever. So it's like, I feel like the numbers are, I feel like we're very, very close. I, I think on the news. I've, I've yep, gotten tested like three research. times. I've gotten tested like three times already. And, you know, yeah. every other, thank, thank goodness, every time it's been, you know what I mean? So, yeah. knock on, yeah. knock on wood. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's crazy how, it's crazy how they just have us all scared. That scares me. Right I know, now. right. You know, it just it's it's just it's just a little eerie. Well, That's everybody, I mean, they had to scare everybody. It's like everybody. a sci-fi <laughs> movie. It's scary. It is. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like a bad bad sci-fi film like, that like, we were living script. for over it's, a are year. Are we really living this? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They what had a uh, when 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 they're when they were doing in Los Angeles, they had the Black Lives Matter protests, mm -hmm. and I remember being in a store. And I look, I, I'm walking down the aisle of the store and I look over and the toilet paper aisle was completely cleared out. And there were other aisles that were completely cleared out. Just no, like, it was like, it was, it was just almost like you were in one of a bad horror movie. Like you're talking about like a twilight zone, like just there's empty and like a, I've never seen the shelves so empty before. Mm -hmm. And at that very moment, there was an announcement because that day the governor issued a curfew in uh, or maybe it was the mayor in Los Angeles because of the protests and the violence and the breaking the windows and everything else. So I'm walking down the store. I have like my cart and with some groceries or whatever. I look down this empty aisle and then at, at the same time I hear the store will be closing in 10 minutes because of a 6 p.m. curfew. And I'm thinking to myself, Am I in the purge right now? Like, am I? Am I? Am I, I in, in this life? 
and it was real. It wasn't yeah. a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought I was being punked. I was like, are we being punked? Right. Like, really? Are, are, is, that, is, is, is Ashton Kutcher going to come out? <laughs> like, is something like that going to yeah. happen, like, to all of us simultaneously or something like that? I really <laughs> thought it was a joke, man. I mean, you know how how many like horror films are going to come out about about COVID though. I don't seen, think. So. I hope not. I hope not. And I've I, seen so I've seen a couple on freaking Netflix that they're mm-hmm. putting in like the top spots that have to do with like diseases, like you know, wiping out the you know humanity. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, diseases and stuff. Yeah, but I don't think that I, I would hope that people don't do a ton about COVID because. It's like the marketplace doesn't need that. Like you don't, yeah, exactly. people don't go to the movies to watch a war movie in it's times sad. of war. They want escapism. Yeah. They want mm-hmm. something that's different from their lives. And it's like, you see COVID on the news every single day. You don't okay. want to go to the movie theater and have more COVID. Yeah, exactly. You, know? exactly. Um, you want, you want a good experience when you go to movie. You want, you want a reason to forget. Like I was, um, have you watched the, uh, the show? I think it's on Apple TV plus it's the morning show. Oh, with, the morning uh, show, yeah. Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston, Aniston Reese Reese Steve Reese. Carell. How amazing was that written? I mean, that was completely so, so good. But what they get at is at one point, Reese Weatherspoon comes in or somebody comes in and they're like a real hot shot, high flyer. Want to tell the people that what's really going on in the world. Mm-hmm. And they're all CNN like, and they're like, we're the fucking morning show. What do you <laughs> want everybody to go commit suicide? Is that what you want? Just everybody to be yeah. mad and go commit suicide? We got to give them a reason to escape this. We mm-hmm. are not going to sit there and shove it down their throats. And at the same time, it's what the mass media has been doing to us through every outlet in this, you know, whole thing. But the way they highlight the Me Too movement in there and how that was written, I thought was very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, really good show. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would check have it out, to, Rock. I, definitely yeah, check it out. Definitely. Rock. I have to yeah. watch that. And um, any any fans of the real the real world show are probably gonna want to know this. Um, the both both of you, like, what story stood out to you the most? Like, behind the scenes story, like fun or wild or whatever. Josh, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't really understand what what story are you talking about from tonight or? or well, no, or no, we, from being yeah. on on the show, the real the real world. Like, what is there any like oh, funny Lord. or fun or wild like some kind of story? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> looks like Mike's oh, hiding. Oh. <laughs> you, you, uh, so, uh, I uh, think you know. Uh, I think it happened and stayed there for a reason, but okay. there were a lot of, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of times where, you know, I think Mike even said it. it's like uh, Josh and Andrew brought home like every stray dog in, in, in DC kind of thing. <laughs> and there were a lot of people it. that, yeah, there were a lot of people that passed through that, uh, that house. But you know yeah. what? I'm. I was. I was. Uh, I think everybody just had the, their their free will to do their own thing, and a few didn't, but most of us did. You know, and and, and we took advantage of being yeah. in the situation and yeah. living in the moment and and just doing what we were there for. You know. Yeah, and what we were there to do is to make out with people on the pool table. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, see that happen. You know what I mean? Or the time that, you know, I brought the girl that, that, that came home and tried to break, uh, I, I brought the girl's friend home and the girl that came with me tried to break up Andrew and his girlfriend. Oh, Remember yeah, that? Yeah. Were, she tried to sue MTV saying me and Andrew <laughs> forced her to drink and, you know, we're putting shit in her drink or, or, or oh, something wow. like that, which, which is complete bullshit. But she tried to, you know, make herself known saying she couldn't get work. Now the at make the the out of work makeup artist because she made herself a makeup artist overnight like they were calling her the the I don't know whatever they were calling her but um I I met her friend Isabella and Isabella was a lead singer for a band in D.C. and I you know I really I really kind of liked her and the other one was just a straggler that was following us because she liked Andrew and then yeah. found out that Andrea was his girlfriend once she got there and it, it was a whole can of worms just waiting to explode yeah yeah I yeah I remember that. that. I thought Man. that was good. My boy Tony was here for that too. My boy Tony Luke was there for that too. I thought that was that was a great uh, that was a great moment. That was a, a completely like oh my goodness, is this really going on moment? Yeah. Like, yeah, was, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There were a few of those. I mean, there were, were just, like there was it was 
the first, the, the one that comes to my mind is when, remember when Ty dropped Andrew off the balcony and we all yeah. thought that Andrew and he fell into a planter and he like, like his head went into the soil instead of on the concrete, which would have uh-huh. been really bad. Yeah, there was really another worked. time. I think I fought with Ty most most of all, Ty or Ashley, because there was another time where Ty and Emily were fighting, and Emily mm-hmm. became like Emily and I became tight, and uh, yeah. and we like we call each other twin, and like like we just yeah. became tight. And I and I remember he like pushed her or something, and I heard it happen, and I was yeah. in the shower, and so I I I ran out of the shower with a towel on, and and I'm like yelling at Ty. And she's yelling and he's yelling and I'm yelling. And I remember in the back of my mind thinking like, oh shit, I'm about to fight somebody ah, on national see. TV it, naked yeah. because this towel's <laughs> for sure going to come off. I'm going to be butt ass <laughs> naked fighting on national TV. I was like, please don't. And it didn't happen. It de-escalated. But uh, that was one moment. No, like, I remember, I, well, see, I remember, so I remember he pushed her against the wall. And I think we yeah. all, like, we all kind of reacted that way. You jumped out, I jumped up. We were yeah. like, all right. So if he, if we were, we both looked at it. if he hits her again, yeah. we're go, we're go, we're going to have to do something about it. Like not hits mm-hmm. her because he didn't hit her to begin with. He just kind of like pushed her away from him, but mm-hmm. pushed her against the wall. Yeah, he pushed her right against the wall. And me, that's the first thing me and Mike did was look at each other. Like Mike ran out and like, like we reacted yeah. to it. So if he would have like you know put her put put it like a hand around her neck or even went to punch her, I think we were both going after him. And there's no way he was he was he was taking both of us. There's, yeah. There was no way, no. So yeah, yeah, he's a big dude, but there he's was, a big there was dude. No, I, you know, I, it didn't matter to me. I, I fight big dudes all the time, but it, it's. I think <laughs> Ty was just another one that, uh, it, it's it's just the you know the the portrayal of character, the one of the ones that just fit the uh, the persona, and you know they knew how he was going to react and and this and that. You know, it's they they always go a certain route. You know. Yeah. yeah. I feel like in the beginning, everybody was on good behavior. And, and, and there were moments like I would, we went to the, we would work out together. We went to the gym and everything. And like, he was, he was cool a lot of the time, but towards the end, I feel like everybody was fighting with him. Yeah. Got a, yeah. I think everybody got a certain kind of way, I guess. Yeah. Everybody was just like ready for it, either ready for it to be over and ready for this next chapter to start. Cause we were all just like, so over it at that point probably yeah. or it was just like you know everybody was you know the the aura was the aura the, the aura was diffused it was it was, it was it was killed a little bit because ty was definitely cool but would be a certain way you know a certain time if you drank or something like this or whatever which which everybody does which everybody did yeah. you know and what, what nobody knows behind the scenes is the times we were like that and the times we weren't Sometimes you don't see when we start drinking, but you know we're drunk already. We know we're drunk already. Yeah. Other people know we're drunk already. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, we were just drunk all the time sometimes. And that's just how it went. Well, yeah, because what do you do when you can't watch TV? You can't listen to the radio. You can't go anywhere. You're in a house with yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you're going to drink and, and, and have sex and run amok and <laughs> do everything you can to, to make us a good time. And it's like, you know, we're, we're eight kids in our prime. Mm-hmm. You know, let's let's see how these eight kids in their prime like each other. Hey, let's let, let's do it. And I can't say it isn't a genius show. It's the first reality show. It's the first social experiment. People forget that. You know, it's 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 the first. And I'm happy to to say I've been a part of it. And yeah, yeah. Okay. And Josh, you like horror movies as as much as me. And Mike was in a horror movie with. Two of the biggest names in horror, Lynn Shay and to- Tobin Bell. <laughs> That's so badass, bro. <laughs> so badass. I'm sure you got, you know, so times like that, I'm sure you like, you just got to like have a moment with yourself. And it's like, yeah, I, I'm, in the, <laughs> I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. And, and I, can, I can only imagine what that felt like for you, brother. And um, I, I, I get to, you know, I get to say I can, I can relate a little bit, like, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I had those moments again now due to, you know, my, my, my recent stuff and like that. It's, it, it's, there's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, same. Like, I just, like, congrats for that. I'm so happy that you're, you're doing that. You're doing what you love. And, um, you know, I wake up every day and I, I'm grateful that I get to do what I do because, it could it could all go away tomorrow, you know. So it's just like yep. I want to take advantage of it and uh, really appreciate it and share it with people I care about and all that kind of stuff. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just I I I don't want to keep you two like too long. Um, Josh, let, why don't why don't you tell everyone about the 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 big fight coming up on on June June twelfth. Oh, so I touched on it a little bit, but we got uh, Aaron Carter fighting Lamar Odom. Anybody who follows Celebrity Box and knows the kid was supposed to fight me about a year ago, but we'll just see what happens, um, you know, as we move forward. Uh, I, can't, I can't really explain too much or say too much, but uh, we have some negotiations for, 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 for my opponent coming up, and there are definitely, uh, you know, some good opponents, and I don't underestimate any opponents, but uh, June 12th is definitely going to be a spectacle and uh, celebrity boxing excellence at its finest. And uh, we're going to do what we all know and the show that we can all bring and have these two uh, try to, uh, you know, give a good show and really, you know, duke it out and, and, get, and, and get this aggression out the things they're doing, you know, wrong with their lives and how they're moving on from a certain point in their lives. Because when you accomplish something like this, there's no greater feeling. <clears throat> And like I say, we all come from a recovery background and we have this, uh, this struggle with life at some point. So maybe, you know, there's a lot of malarkey and a lot of, uh, you know, shade we get thrown at us for doing what we do. But one, we get to do what we love for a living. Two, it's about bettering yourself. Now, anybody who's got a problem with people in bettering themselves, you've got a serious problem with yourself. And three, I'm in the ring all the time. <laughs> We can go in there and handle it. But as far as I'm saying, June 12th, you will not be disappointed. Uh, we're talking with a couple of different streaming platforms. It's going to be Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Showboat Hotel. Get your streaming services, your platforms, all that good stuff. And uh, get your tickets. I know there's a VIP package available and stuff like that. We can't say too much more because of the COVID restrictions, but there yeah. will be tickets for sale, actual tickets for sale soon. Um, and you know, Mike, if you're ever interested, you know, you're always welcome, brother. Plot twist. I'm the opponent. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming that, in. That, that, How, about guys? How about that, ladies and gentlemen? He's ready to go. And I, I must say, I, I think of a better one. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that, but, uh, that actually would be a fun fight, though. Like, two guys that are friends from from. Hell no. The that would not be show. a fun fight for me. Are you kidding? No way. <laughs> Hell no. Nope, I'll be. I'll get. I'll get a I'm, ticket. I'm up. I'm up for showing. I'm up for showing you some stuff, Mike. If you want to do that, uh, that <laughs> that role that you were talking about and stuff like that, and you know, I can I can make you just as quick. You know what Let's I mean? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Maybe I'll come out and visit. Yeah, it'd be cool, man. I could show you like you know the Rocky statue stuff. Like, remember when people <laughs> were calling you Rocky at one point, and I was yeah. actually mad. I was mad about that. I was. They were, was they were calling jealous. Mike Rocky. Mike yeah, because I'm from I Colorado. Think. <laughs> and he was talking a certain way. It oh, yeah. just like no, I think they 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 were said they were his speech. He was just he he didn't sound like anybody else. Like he had his <laughs> own sound to him. So the girls would call him Rocky, and like these couple girls were calling him Rocky. And I was like, damn. I was oh like, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was like, I guess, I guess they don't see that in me. That's cool. They were calling me <laughs> yeah, something yeah. else. You know what I mean? Well, I I mean, listen, I I love that. I like <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, Rockies. Like that's one of my. That's the movie yeah. that I've seen. 50 times. Oh, definitely. My dad and my yeah, brother, we would watch it and we would work, like we would be doing push-ups in the living room and like my, yep. my, my dad would take us in the garage and like box us and like yep. the neighborhood kids would come over and we would box and that's the, that's the movie right yeah. there. <laughs> same, man. I used to do the same thing growing up. My mom would get like sick of me. She would ship me off to my, my, my grandmother's, my father's and the only thing I had next to me was the, you know, the VCR, the TV and the Rocky box sets. Mm -hmm. So I would sit there and watch them and learn. My father was an Olympic qualifier in 1984. So um, I kind of learned a lot from, from him and, you know, my mother too, who's a very, very tough woman and, um, you know, kind of showing me the one, two specials that, that, that I use so much these days. But uh, Pat's King of Steaks uh, is my official sponsor. And that's where uh Rocky was filmed uh, 1977. There's actually plaque in front of the cheese fry window. And it's like right there, it says on this spot, Sylvester Stallone stood while filming the major motion picture Rocky. And if you look up, it's me with my celebrity boxing title right there too. So that, 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 that's a crowning moment for me. And uh, I'm blessed to, to say I can, you know, look up and see that and look down and see that. And I'm like, all right, I brought it back to Philly. This guy started it here. It's, a, it's, it's all culmination right here. That's good. This is my area. <laughs> that's cool that's cool yeah
and bit. and Mike has a big horror film that's out now with Lynn Shay and Tobin Bell, and he is and he has a a, a big role in Days of Our Lives Days too. Of our lives. What's yeah. going on? Um, yeah, the soap <laughs> opera life. How is it, Mike? Is it is it is it is it everything that uh, what's her name? Kelly Ripa says it is, or or is it is it is it fun? Working yeah, I mean, I don't know what Kelly says, but like, <laughs> I'm the only, pace. I'm only, I, she's the only soap star I know. That's yeah, you're like uh, Kelly Ripa. I mean, I'm like, I got to get one. I got to get one. Yeah, besides yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Person, well, thank so. you. I uh, <laughs> the pace is the pace is, is a lot. It's uh they shoot an episode a day, so you're shooting yeah. seventy five pages in a day. Uh, awesome. And and you and I have such a respect for those actors. Like they hustle, they learn that dialogue, they get that take. Um, it's really yeah. taught me to, to just be free and let go of everything that I plan and everything that I try to do and just like be natural and listen and bounce off the other character. And so it's really a good exercise in being present Beautiful. and just going yeah. for it. Um, so we'll see. I mean, everybody's been, I play this in the beginning of my run on the show. I was this like insecure, like nice quirky uh, intern that, and he has glasses and everything else. And as the story progresses, you find out that, I'm actually spying on somebody at the company and I'm a psychopath and I kidnap my mom and I fall in love with this girl and I like, I'm cra I go crazy every single episode. I'm crazier and crazier. So, That's great. so right now people, there's like a dozen people on the show that want to kill me. So, you know, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. so if, if my film goes sag after, like I would, I would just love to get you on that list somehow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, let me know. Yeah, that would be, like, because uh, there's definitely a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there, we have a whole, like, Son of Sam killer feel going on, and um, this is the same time as those killings, and also, like, the um, the Richie Ramirez killings, mm -hmm. stuff like that, so um, we're going to have those kind of characters in there, so I'm going to need somebody that can, people that can really pull off playing uh, a psychopath or, uh, you know, cat, you know, stuff like that, and I, I, I got a feeling you would. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cool. And is so there? <laughs> this was great though. Thanks so much for uh, taking yeah. the time. Yeah. Out. No. Oh, thanks for so setting this up. Definitely. Thanks for thanks for getting all this together. Like this. <laughs> I'm still I'm, yeah, I'm so. still I still can't. I know I'm gonna have dreams tonight of like times on the show and like yeah for sure you know this is such a blast from the past yeah. but yeah so yeah. another thing another reason I like doing this it's like audio and video time travel it's always something you can look back on you know mm -hmm. years from like I said years from where it is and you know you see how far you come and you check in and stuff like that um, I'm probably gonna have my podcast up and running soon so I'd love to have you on for that too it'd be cool you know yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about the, we'll talk about my how you're training me to be a boxer. That would that would be sure. fun. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll yeah, whatever you need, whatever cool. you need. It's uh, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> and Josh and Mike, tell tell the fans where they can find find you at online. Yeah, I'm just everywhere, like Mike Manning, uh, just on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. So, pretty simple all platform. Check them out. Mike Manning, Days of Our Lives star and SAG representative and <laughs> real world alumni. You know, boy, you know. Mike Manning. So go check him out. <laughs> uh, it's uh, at Saving Jones 17 on Instagram, Jones Gang TV 20 on Instagram, also JG Studios on YouTube and the Shock Culture Now podcast. And last, the last thing is there any, any, Last words, any words you want to say to any of the fans that followed the, the the real world and followed you you and Josh on the show? I mean, I'll say thank you to the fans. There, there are people that reach out. Uh, you know, when I booked days and those episodes started airing, people would reach out and say, you know, I've I followed you since real world and, and <laughs> this is great and everything. And it, it feels okay. like a lot of people, there are a lot of people that have stayed, you know, that have taken an interest in my journey and stayed a part of that journey. And, um, and that's just, that's huge. Like that's, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I am so, so grateful for that, that another human would care about 
you know, what I'm doing. Um, so I'm so, so grateful. So just like, I say, thank you to, to them. I say, thank you, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. And um, I hope that I continue to create content that makes people interested and proud and everything. And to Josh, I say, whoever you're fighting in June, kick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> to you, I say thank you, and uh, you know I will. And there's, uh, there's, yeah, there's definitely, you know, just something special about the experience that we shared um, that 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 summer in D.C. And it's, uh, it's so cool to catch up. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, there's, there's no words to describe because you know not everybody goes through this. We belong to a select few, and uh, we're able to say we experienced it and uh, and, and came out on the other side. Best of luck uh, to all you do. And uh, thank you so much for uh, anybody who, who, who supported me and Mike's journey thus far. And we will keep putting out that content that, that, that keeps you interested and just keeps us going. I think now more than ever with the social platforms, we're able to get so much more closer to people and make a, a difference. Yeah. In, in, in somebody's lives and it doesn't necessarily have to be just famous people's lives or other famous people or however you look at it people like you know they call it clout they call it flame you call it whatever you want <laughs> be a good human being be a humanitarian man be somebody to help somebody i'm saving Joan 17 for a reason i was saved i was literally saved so anybody i can help anybody that's struggling there's the uh, there's plenty of programs where you can reach out. Find me. I'm not hard to find. I'm you know I'm local. I'm not too far away. You know I'm in the suburbs now. I had to move on up, but I'm not far away. So uh, I just want to say thanks to uh, to everybody that uh, that believed in in me and, and and in Mike. And we've both started to you know go on this 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 journey and and this 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 light has just been shine in, on both of us and now it comes out of both of us and anything we can do to, to, to help somebody's life, uh, it's a big deal to us. Amen. Amen. What he said. <laughs> I can, you know, I can, I can do it sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank, thank you so much for coming on the show and I'm really happy you two got a chance to finally see one another even though it's online, but you still got to see yeah. one another. <laughs> Yeah, Rocky, I appreciate I gotta, you setting this up, man. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much, bud. man. I mean, it's so it's such a it's such a small world still, you know, living outside of the real world, no pun intended, <laughs> living in the real world, no pun intended. It's still such a small world because Rocky's, you know, our families know each other. And yeah. Rocky's been involved in, you know, the wrestling industry and the promotion mm -hmm. industry for, you know, God knows how long around the area that I'm in. And it just so happens that, you know, we, we have roots, you know, our families know each other. And uh, he's been the miss one of the missing links. I have a few puzzles to my team and uh, I'm really happy to have him. I'm happy he, you know, reached out to you. And that's how I saw it on, on his interview page. And I, he's hitting the ground running with these interviews. And I'm proud of him, man. I really am. Thanks, Josh. No, I am, bro. You did, you, did, you did a lot, bro. You did a lot since we last you know, spoke and, you know, you, you, you realize what you need to do and you're executing that now. So someone on my team, I'm going to tell you, I'm proud of you because um, this is amazing to make happen. And, and you just did it, brother. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mike, definitely. I got you on IG now, you know, um, I'll, I'll follow you from all accounts, send you a message and we'll keep in touch now, brother. It's so good to hear from you. Cool. Yeah. I would love that. Please do. For sure, man. For sure. You have a good night, guys. All right, guys. You too, brother. Have a good All right. one. All right. See you. See you. See you.